you are not ready for this. No one is ready for this. I, myself, was barely ready for this. I can't, I don't even know if I can show it to you. It's just, it's too good. I told you, you're not ready. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a first look, run, and review of the new H10 Optic. I see you. From Vanquish Products. And here it is right here. And you're thinking to yourself, that's a ripper. Mm. 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 <laughs> if you're in Australia, maybe you're thinking that's a ripper of a truck, mate. It's not a ripper, though. This is an all-new platform from Vanquish Products, and I'm very excited, elated almost, to be able to share this with you. It is incredible. This is a really remarkably great vehicle and has so many innovations and so much thought put into it that I can really see this being a very good seller. It is really difficult to find a good place to start, but let's start somewhere. This is a fully caged buggy. There is no traditional C-rail chassis in this vehicle. So it's built on the DNA of a VS410, but it is not a VS410. It does have a VFD transmission, centered gears, chromoly shafts, the ability to change bearing plates, could probably even add a dig. Uh, so it's similar in that way. Uh, it has axles, but those are all new, and we'll get into that in a moment. But I think it's fair to start right at the very beginning, and the outside, and what we see here. Sort of meant to live in sort of a King of Hammers style look, and uh, I think it achieves that very, very nicely. It's not a branded body in any way, shape, or form, but these are all hard body panels. There is no Lexan here. Oh wait, I gotta change that. 43 days. I had that all ready to go. These are all ABS plastic panels. There is no Lexan on this truck anywhere. The interior isn't even Lexan. It's all hard body ABS plastic as well. It's really spectacular. Molded in seats, molded in driver. He's only, I'd say, half man. <laughs> He's half man, half seat. Uh, but he is nicely molded. He isn't a gloss, based plastic. I kind of wish he was more of a dull coat, uh, but you know, I guess they wanted the helmet to be shiny. Um, lots of nice sticker decals there to really make that whole interior come to life. And there is a portion there where you can still see the top of the VFD transmission. So you can add, where is it? I've got one somewhere. Oh yeah. So you can add the shifter mechanisms if you've got an extra one of these floating around. So that would be a nice, cool little addition. I don't think they include that part in the parts. Oh, they do. Hey, look at that. If you were in, uh, an enterprising young 3D printing enthusiast, uh, I imagine that you would be able to create other grill options. And I might actually look at trying to do a few myself. Uh, it's not a crazy difficult looking design. It would be nice to have a few different options there, maybe to give it more of a Toyota look or a Jeep look, if you're into that. Um, but yeah, nice to see some different options there. I'm sure Knight Customs is already on the case. Uh, there are uh, mounting holes for lights. Now, I don't know what light bucket would actually fit in there, but it is interesting that they've included something. Uh, no lenses, as you can see, but uh, you know most of these sort of rock buggies, they tend to not have a typical lens, and you just put like a you know, like a Baja design style light pod in there instead. So that could be a thing as well. It comes in two different liveries. I've got the Sparco livery here, as you can see. Uh, it's blue <laughs> with a black cage. There's also a Yokohama liveried model that comes with a gray cage and red panels. And man, what fantastically good looking panels they are. If you see uh, similarities to the Ripper, yes, obviously they are similar in that they're both sort of these style of buggies. Do they call it a buggy? They call it a trail buggy. Uh, here's my ripper. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Uh, and you can see there is a certain amount of similarity there. Um, this one's obviously got a few more slots in the grill, uh, and this one's all aluminum and machined, uh, but you can see where they sort of got the inspiration for sure. But looks aside, I can assure you this is an all-new platform and has a lot of really cool secrets to share with you underneath it. 
Now, like I said, fully caged buggy. Uh, there is no C channel. There is no chassis rails. It is all just built on a cage, which uh, is really cool. Uh, and probably one of the reasons they decided to go with all this hard plastic was to help increase the weight a little bit. Lots of nice scale details also on the exterior of this body. Let's flip it around here so you get a look at the back. We've got a really nice molded power tank. Uh, that's for your uh, airing up and airing down. Uh, also a great big fuel cell that still has the nice aluminum uh, cap on there, which I always think is a really nice touch. Uh, and um, that's about it for the exterior. Uh, what have we got? Oh yes, uh, we've also got a molded in front bumper that's molded into the cage. And uh, one nice little detail here uh, that I noticed right away, there's actual little molded bump stops to prevent you from bottoming out your shocks, which I thought was a really cool little touch. Uh, they're not, obviously they're not functional functional, but I thought that was a really nice little detail there and uh, cool to see that they included something like that. It's that attention to detail that I think Vanquish is very good at, and they keep getting better, if I'm honest, too. Uh, this is certainly a very good-looking truck, and these hard body panels really sell the look of it for sure. All right, now let's talk about some of the other new features on this vehicle. The first and probably most enticing one for all of you is this really great looking H10 optic axle. You can see that it's a behind the axle steering setup, servo on axle, so it is less obviously scale accurate, but they totally redeemed themselves by doing this nice stainless steel steering ram, uh, which just looks so cool. I know I've seen a few of these done uh, with a custom, uh, custom setup, uh, but this, having this included, uh, is just so cool. It looks really, really neat. Uh, I can't wait for Vanquish to do the aluminum version of these axles because that is just going to look so rad. I love it. Uh, also, uh, the H10 axle also features a new knuckle. This is a completely new mold, so it's an entirely new axle. It is a straight axle. Huzzah! They decided not to do... Oh, my glasses are fogging up because I'm just so excited. That's how I know I'm really into a video, when I get a little bit sweaty. <laughs> Everywhere a link joins or a, a, a knuckle joins a link or anything like that, it's all double shear throughout. You can see double shear even on the stainless pieces, um, double shear on the link mounts, double shear on the knuckle mounts. So lots of strength built into these axles. And knowing how Josh and Brandon drive, I'm sure they tested these well within an inch of their lives. So I'm sure they're gonna hold up just fine. I rarely have any troubles with any of my other Vanquish axles, so I presume that that's going to be the same thing here. I just think this whole setup looks really, really cool. And the way that they were able to maintain all of the suspension travel, yet having the servo sitting so high on the axle, uh, it's pretty uh, impressive. And those little bump stops, they work. That's pretty cool, man. That is neat. Uh, here's what it looks like under there, as you can see. Uh, there's your steering servo and how it very gracefully does not smash into anything. And then room there for a servo winch right up front. I wonder what could go there. Huge blower. Um, yeah, really great looking axle, lots of strength built in. I absolutely love that it's a straight axle as well. And to be fair, let's take a look at the bottom here. You can see it's all well protected and sits nice and high up right behind the actual axle. So there's no there's no worry that you're going to get some debris or a rock stuck in there. Uh, I mean, anything's possible, but uh, they've really done their homework to make sure that that's all quite protected and out of the way, which looks really great. Uh, speaking of the bottom of the truck, here it is. <laughs> uh, and very nice, smooth belly, as you can see, integrating the VFD transmission, long skid, uh, and then these nice tubed out sliders that really kind of build right into the whole structure and uh, will do a really nice job of keeping everything nice and smooth under there. You're getting nice stainless links, top and bottom. The top links are a, a bit smaller than usual and they're not tapered like I normally see from Vanquish. Uh, I'm sure this is probably just a cost saving measure and uh, with them being top links, I'm not all that worried. 
A new rear axle as well. Uh, center pumpkin on this one. Uh, another H, uh, the center H10 to match the front. Uh, you also get the nice aluminum cap there as well. So not just on the uh, axle here, but also on the um, fuel cell as well. Very cool to see that. Oh yeah, there's also a cool radiator back here. So a nice scale detail, a little bit hard to see for you. And that's actually a carryover from the original VS410. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, their usual drive shafts. Uh, again, these are great drive shafts. I very much like these. Uh, of course, they do sell the incision upgrade metal uh, drive shafts, which I will probably be doing a full upgrade series on this buggy because there are a lot of possibilities here, and I'll get into those in a second. Let's finish it off by talking about the electronics. 35 turn brushed motor uh, paired with uh, the VT1 and VE1 ESC. Uh, which I think is sort of like, it's so funny, on the, <laughs> on the diagram here, that shows a Tamiya connector, and I hope that's just like a nod to um, the comedy that Josh and I often provide on Wednesday nights. Uh, but nice, uh, sort of, uh, I guess it's like a Hobbywing 1060, I guess that's basically what it is. Uh, waterproof, brushed, ESC, and uh, both that motor, ESC, and the servo that's included. I don't remember the specs on the servo, but if I do, I'll put them down below right, right in there. Those are all half marathon proven components, so you know they're going to last at least a half marathon about 12 miles or more actually more a little bit more a great place to start for ready to run truck uh and like i said i haven't had any troubles with them and uh they hold up uh, really well i presume though i'm going to be changing that motor out sooner rather than later because i would like to have a little more punch with this vehicle it just looks like it needs to go fast over the you know the whoops these are uh, Vanquish S8E shocks, uh, aluminum body, plastic caps, bleeder hole, uh, and uh, a pretty decent shock. I don't have as much trouble with these leaking as I have some other brands. Uh, no shock that I've run has ever been perfect. So there you go. That's a first look at the vehicle itself. In the box, of course, you get batteries. Nice set of double A's for your uh, transmitter, a T-wrench, some plastic bits, including a uh, shifter setup for the actual VFD. So you could plop that on there if you wanted. Uh, there's also a tool for removing the aluminum cap from the rear axle if you were so inclined to do so. I don't know why you would. Uh, manual for the VE1 ESC, a manual for the VT1 transmitter, which is an excellent transmitter for a ready to run truck. A very sparse sticker sheet, which I will mention does not include any SPG stickers, nor are they on the box. I've been asking for that for years. What's going on? Uh, I've already added the Vanquish logos to the, uh, the rear sort of number plates here because if I have any beef, it's that you don't include enough numbers to do 77 on both sides. Where's that transmitter? Here it is right here. Ooh. Always a satisfying noise. I really like this transmitter. One-handed driving operation, digital readout, digital trim switches, uh, and uh, third, fourth channel, four channels. You get four channels on this? You get four channels. Uh, and that's a four channel toggle switch. So if you wanted to add a winch or something, maybe you could. Really nice transmitter. I do like that one very much. Uh, and uh, glad they are continuing to include it because it's good. I haven't done this yet. Look at that. You can get your hand right under there if you want. <laughs> now you heard me early on in the video gushing about how this is so great and it's you're not ready for it and you just you won't be able to handle this jelly. Well, there's a lot of innovation going on here and a lot of thinking about what people might want to do and how to do it. <laughs> One of the things I haven't touched on yet is where do you put a battery? And you're looking at it and you're like... Where do you put the battery in here? Well, uh, there's two places to put a battery. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get to that right now. You'll have to uh, bear with me though because i got to show you things at the same time. But if you can see right there, there is a body clip. There's one on either side. And then there's a metal post. So I'm going to pull this body clip out. Which is easy to do actually. I'm going to stick my finger in there, push down on that, and out of the bottom 
pulls this rod. An inanimate carbon rod. And once you've done that, this whole panel pulls out and that's where your battery goes. Oh my God. It's so smart. It's so smart. Oh, there's no, ta it's not a Tamiya plug. Darn it. Um, but yeah, there's two of these. There's one on each side. They only gave you Velcro straps for one side, but I'm sure you've got some Velcro straps somewhere. But look at that. It's got a tab there that slots into there. So you can't, you can't, it keys in basically. And then that snaps in and you put this post back in, you put your pin in, batteries in. I think this is so smart. I, honestly, this is like game changer easy. And it's funny because this came from Brandon, who, uh, if you don't know, Brandon designed the Exo from Axial, which was the most difficult chassis to put a battery into. So clearly he learned his lesson. Uh, but yeah, this is just awesome. The only downside is you do need a pretty specific size of battery to fit. It doesn't take a 5,000 milliamp hour 3S pack. It just that won't fit in there. You're going to have to reduce your milliamp expectations. Uh, but it's on the box here, and I probably should have remembered this. I can't, I can't remember everything. 93 millimeters by 36 millimeters by 42 millimeters. Dual battery access, just like I said. Such a smart idea. Do I have a battery that will fit? Uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Let's see if this fits. If it fits, it ships. Mm, that's a bit tight. I think I may have over... Oh, no, there we go. That'll fit. All right. Get in there. It's obvious this is a little bit... This is a little bit bigger than it probably should be. But it fits. Barely. Uh, but yeah, it that... That's kind of pushing the limits, I think, of what will fit. But it did, and it's in there. So stop your whining. Very cool way to put your batteries in, and not, you know what? Pretty quick way to change them out. Not too bad. I like that a lot. That is very cool. So that's one cool innovation that Vanquish thought of. Get this out of here, because we don't put trucks away with the battery installed. There should be like a rhyme for that, you know, like a like a, a a slogan. If you're in Battery Town, you'll burn your house down. There you go. All right, so yeah, really awesome place for batteries. The fact that you could put two in there, and then it's sort of like hot swappable. So if you've run out of one, stick the other one in, and then it's balanced out. You've got weight, helps keep the truck a little bit lower. I like that. That's a good idea. The next big thing. Um, and it's something that's been coming up a lot more lately. People like four wheel steer. I don't know why <laughs> it's so complicated and it doesn't work on my brain very well, but people like it. And, uh, one of the things that Vanquish did was they made it so you can remove the bottom portion of this fuel cell, take a second front axle, put it on the back, and then you've got all the clearance you need to run four-wheel steer with this great H10 optic axle. So smart! Rather than have someone homebrew a solution or have to take out this entire fuel cell, they just made it so you can take the bottom part off, keep it looking nice and scale on top, and run four-wheel steer if you want. Absolutely brilliant, and you don't need to swap radios or receivers for that either. Vanquish also thought about running servo winches, and there is space up front under the chassis for you to run a servo winch. Brilliant. And if for some reason you wanted to run a rear winch as well, there's uh, facilities to do that as well. Basically remove a portion of the ESC tray, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's in there. So if you remove a section of this ESC tray, there's room for you to mount more servos which I think also means that there's probably a place for you to mount one if you wanted to run dig. That's probably exactly what that's for. Let me confirm. I'll just get Josh on the old horn right now. Yep, I was right. Uh, that is for the servo to operate the dig if you decided to add a dig later on. 
As for wheels and tires, these are the Yokohama Geolanders. Uh, this is Vanquish's latest scale tire. 4.75 inches tall, uh, 1.9 of course. These are plastic KMC Riot beadlocks. So uh, you can uh, obviously swap these tires out without ruining them, uh, or the wheel for that matter. It is a single stage foam, so not their more high-end dual stage foams, but for an RTR, they are an excellent wheel and tire and foam combination. So there you go. That's sort of a first look of it on the bench. And my, oh my, it really, it really is a great looking buggy. I guess you can't really call it a truck so much. This front axle is just, I cannot get over how cool that looks. Uh, as for which one I like better, uh, if I'm going to be totally honest, I think the Yokohama one speaks to me more. I like the red and I like the gray cage as opposed to the black cage. I think it just kind of shows off a little bit more detail. Uh, nothing wrong with the Sparko one, uh, but Yokohama just for me kind of just feels like a better livery, I guess, too. Which one are you more interested in? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading your feedback and I try to answer as many of those comments as I can. And of course, if you're liking this video and you like innovation, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. All right, enough talking about it. Let's get outside and see how it does. Hello, welcome to the outdoor portion of this video. This is the H10 Optic, and my, I have to tell you, it is much fun. Straight off the bat, I don't feel as if this was designed to be just a pure rock crawler. I feel like this is more of like trail, Baja, 
you know, it can go over rocks, obviously. It's very capable, but it's not like in its stock form. Truly a rock crawling machine. It's not like a VRD carbon. You know, it'll, it'll get up obstacles, some of them. But in many cases, it's sort of more like, let's go fast. Let's float over things as opposed to just crawl slowly over things. And that's not to say that it isn't spectacular, because it really is. It's just such a nice looking vehicle. It handles very well. And uh, it, it just looks awesome on the trails. I'm really very pleasantly surprised by this truck. Buggy. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's got a lot of names. Probably the thing that's most interesting are these new H10 axles with that uh, very cool faux hydraulic ram steering. It just looks so cool, doesn't it? I love that. A stock servo for an RTR servo is plenty powerful. I haven't had any trouble with it. You can see I've definitely hit some rocks and uh, it's holding up very well. I can feel like these screws here, those are gonna be a bit of a pain point for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, this thing really performs nicely. If I had any, I don't know, complaints or con constructive criticism right out of the box, I'd say it's a little narrow. Uh, it does tend to want to kind of tip. And I bet you just a wider hex would kind of help solve that problem. But uh, yeah, it is. It is a blast. And what's great about it is that it doesn't feel like slow in its stock form. It's got enough wheel speed <laughs> to power itself over many obstacles. Ooh, that was a tough hit. But for a 35 turn stock motor, Great place to start. Couple that performance with its rugged good looks. Hard body panels, all the innovation that goes along with it. You really have a winning combination. Very fun buggy, like this thing is fun. That always makes me nervous when I see like someone's walking stick close to a cliff. that person is okay. You okay down there? Back to the H10 optic. Uh, this thing has proven to be a lot of fun. Like I said, it's like main purpose, I'm gonna say, isn't really hardcore rock crawling. It's more about this sort of like going over terrain, uneven terrain, and just bombing through it. Like a bomber? No, this is, obviously it's a 1.9, so it's not quite like a bomber, but it is a nice, like, bomber replacement. Ooh, yeah, and couple that with all the innovations that we've talked about. Like adding rear steer, dig, front servo winch. This thing is ripe for modifying Ooh, and possibilities. I'm very chuffed. Now, should we take it into the devil's crawl area to see how it does? Yes, obviously, I think we should. Let's make our way over there. Ah, it's so great. Steering angle is nice. I uh, feel like we could probably squeeze a bit more out of it. So I'm going to see if I can adjust my endpoints here. EPA for steering right. Yes, it's got more. Give all of it to me. There we go. And left, same thing. Oh, yes. Oodles more. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, doing just fine. On these obstacles. 
And I was like, ah, it's not going to be able to do any of these. All right, let's go down here. Do one of these. I can't remember any of the names of these now. It's been too long. I think we can start at the stairway to the devil. <laughs> yeah, that lightweight is certainly going to help. Effortless, effortless getting up there. My goodness. Whew. That was fun. No, this just does not have the weight over the front axle. Because, I mean, this is a stock truck. There's no brass weights anywhere. I don't think they exist yet for the H10, so. No, well, that was almost it. All right. I will not be spending long in here because it just rained and clearly it's mosquito season. Ah, it's so much fun though. I like this truck a lot. Oh, devil's butt crack. I remember this one. All right, let's see what we can do here. is for this. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> no, I can't do that one. That is not happening. Maybe the line has eroded. I don't think it has though. I really, honestly, I think these are just a tad... Oh, did I find it? Oh, no. Maybe it's less about overall rock crawling performance and more about sort of being a jack of all trades kind of tool. You know, not everything has to be, uh, oh God, mosquitoes. I'm covered in DEET and it's doing nothing. Yo, get up there. Yes, all right. Made it up that one at least. It's also got a bit of a longer wheelbase too, so that's impacting its performance on the crawling portions, but it helps it in sort of the whoops and uh, the fast motion stuff and everything there, but yeah, I just don't think it's got it for this. That's okay. I bet you, you add, I bet you, you add rear steer and then it becomes an entirely different beast. And you know, I'm, I'm probably a, a better censored brushless motor or you know, some sort of brushless setup, stronger servos, etc. And I think you could make an argument to make this a much more versatile vehicle than it already is. But ultimately, I think this is a real winner for Vanquish. They've, uh, they've done some pretty amazing stuff here and uh, solidified a very strong future for this vehicle. So, with that, I think we will end this one. Thank you so much to Vanquish for sending me the H10 Optic so I could do this review. And of course, to you, for watching, because without you, all 90, nearly 95,000 of you, this channel wouldn't exist. Well, it would, just nobody would be watching. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.
getting a good sound out of that. <laughs> 